My name is Rose McNew and I am the head chef at Stella's and so I'm helping kind of coordinate this winter kids camp. I think taking a lot of ingredients that are otherwise really boring, like flour or sugar, um, that are nothing on their own, you wouldn't sit down and eat a bowl of flour, and then turning it into this like gourmet, really unexpected thing is really cool for them. It's a really hands-on process and you can either follow a recipe and have it be really straightforward or you can just throw a bunch of stuff together and see what happens and I think having that creative control is really exciting to kids. A lot of kids either don't know how to cook at all or they only know how to cook like prepared foods or unhealthy foods and so with this like healthy alternatives to baking camp we've been able to show them to like substitute applesauce for butter and substitute banana for eggs and just kind of give them more control. My name's Uma and I'm five. I um I like the baking because we just made cupcakes and what else do I like? Hmm, everything. I like you taking pictures. I like my teachers. I like everything. I like my friends. And it's fun coming here. So I'm Fiona, and I'm a student at Cornell University. I study nutritional science, and this semester I am an intern with the Children's Garden. So far, my responsibilities have been designing curriculum for the winter cooking camp. I would like to relate nutrition, education, cooking, and community outreach all together. So the Children's Garden just seems like a perfect place to get experience. I think it's really important to the community um, an example is the Fire and Ice Festival that was a few weekends ago, and there were so many people there. I saw the person juggling fire, and he balanced one on his forehead, too, at the same time. It's just a really, really great place. You know, kids feel welcome there, adults feel welcome there, and the Children's Garden can just be a place, you know, that just attracts the community, community bonding and it's basically run by one person, Erin, <laughs> and she is just phenomenal. She does so much. I'm Erin Martiel, and I'm the executive director of the Ithaca Children's Garden. The Ithaca Children's Garden, for me, embodies a lot of what I think enhances and enriches quality of life in terms of providing a beautiful space that's accessible to everybody and gets kids and their families connected to nature and to be part of that and especially part of a growing organization that has so much potential is just really exciting to me. Um, but my goal really for the Ithaca Children's Garden is that people feel connected to which means that they feel part of nature rather than apart from nature. And so the intention behind the labyrinth was really to provide this place for contemplation, a special place for meditation and, and solace, peace, but also of celebration of the cycles of the season and how nature shifts throughout the course of a year. And it really represents a terrific partnership with the Ithaca Perinatal Law Support Group and also lots of other folks who have been involved in its development. Uh, my name is Anesti Zakos. I was one of the artists that uh, created a sculpture for the Children's Garden. My sculpture is called Moving Sounds. What I intended to create in this piece was something that's very subtle yet playful at the same time. You know, as, as you're walking by, you can spin them around and make noise. And, you know, as, as you're walking in the labyrinth and, and meditating, you can spin the rings around and, and create a sound and and remember where you are, you know, you're, you're here, right now, and make these moving sounds. To have been asked to do this while my sister had lost a child, and, you know, that kind of, I don't want to say hit me hard, but it was really dear to me that uh, I could be part of something and have that had an impact on me in my life. I'm Tim Dean, one of the chaplains at Cuba Medical Center, um, a minister in the community but not serving a congregation. My um, connection with the Children's Garden 
really came through the labyrinth project itself and it, it was I guess it was around October of a year and a half ago or so when they were starting to promote the the launch of this idea between the Children's Garden and the Ithaca Perinatal Law Support Group, which I knew about because of my work in the hospital. My name is Kate Dimple, and I am the Vice President of the Children's Garden Board. My role with creating the Labyrinth was, I was on the planning committee, I'm part of the Ithaca Perinatal Law Support Group, and the director, Lisa Mackin, and I approached Aaron to have a garden, a memorial garden, and it's this sort of peaceful pause that is available um, for the community as they engage in the garden. My name is Lisa Macklin. I'm one of the co-founders of the lab. Well, life goes on, and it goes on in a completely different way that will never be the same without the child that was lost. But it is a huge tribute to the community that this even exists, and I'm really looking forward to how it can help families. My name is Liz Vinciquera, and the gardens are a very special place for us, and particularly the labyrinth is a really special place for us, because it's a memorial to all the uh, children who died, and we lost our daughter in 2000. 11. It's a reminder to me that even after death, there is always renewal. And so that's something that I find really comforting as I think about the loss that our family endured with our, with our daughter. Because unlike a child that's been born, you have no memories of this child. That, you know, you, you can't think back to like, oh, well, when I held my daughter, or, oh, when we went somewhere, or, oh, when our family did this thing together. There's nothing. There's just the... There's just the memory that a mother has, the physical memory of the child. But this is a kind of loss that's very enduring. And so after two months, people don't ask you anymore, how are you doing? And they tend to just think like, okay, well, you can go on, you can have another child. And and sometimes it's just not that easy. It certainly made me uh, incredibly grateful for every moment that I had with my other child. Um, And I realized that I, I did take things for granted with him and really kind of sought refuge in him after um, after we lost her and so having this space here I think is really important um, because I just don't want people to know these children um, mean to us regardless of whether they've taken one breath or not. I think of it like our daughter who isn't here can still have a presence in the beauty of the nature here and I like to think about the children playing in that space. I do just want people to know that it's um, that you know the parents go through incredible suffering um, with this kind of a loss and the more communities can rally around them to support them and help them make that journey, um, the more everybody can heal from it. And and I think community has a a strong role to play in helping that happen. You know, gardens are their own little micro ecosystems. And, uh, you know, they have to be nurtured and fed. And there are things that that you want in your garden and there are things you don't want in your garden. You gotta keep taking care of the soil. You know, the, the garden is only as healthy as its soil. And so I think all communities are kind of like gardens where we hope things will grow and thrive and flourish. But I think we have to also recognize that sometimes there are things in our communities that don't promote life or promote healthy living. And, you know, we need to work on that.